is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just this is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. This ain't Texas. Oh. Ain't no holding. Hey. They are cars down, 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 down. It's a pocket Texas. Yes! Yeah. We just started. Before we get started, started let's, uh, let's welcome Marcy's arm to the show. <laughs> oh, Marcy, you made an appearance? I, I didn't saw. see. Yeah, yeah, she was so cute. She was, she, was, there, she was so mad at herself. She was like, oh, my arm was in the show. I might have, I might have been distracted because there was a naked Beyonce up there. Oh. So I didn't really, I didn't notice your arm. You ever see those on Instagram? Like, the guy didn't even notice. There, I just watched them the other day, and there was like, there was a mouse on a donut, but a very sexy woman. Fun woman, you know? Yes. And, Don't uh, make that hand. <laughs> A fun she was holding a box of donuts and there was a mouse on but one. You don't and then it read, it said on there, I bet guys didn't even notice there was a mouse on a donut. And I was like, oh my God, there <laughs> is! <laughs> what a misogynist I am. Let's get to some stories. <laughs> That's Beyonce's hit country song, Texas Hold'em, which has already hit number one on the Billboard country charts. So Beyonce's highly anticipated album, Cowboy Carter, drops tonight at midnight. And yesterday, she teased us by dropping the track list. There are some major collaborations with country stars like Dolly Parton on there, Willie Nelson, and Linda Martell. This is going to be a big one, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little bit more on I have Tori's factory. <laughs> what is yes. Tori going to say the rest of the show? Uh, I have something to say. Oh. Um, Cowboy Carter is presented in the style of a country radio program broadcast Ooh. by the fictional KNTRY radio Texas country station. Um, country icons like Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, and you said oh, Linda Martell all pop in as guests and interludes throughout the album. Uh, Miley Cyrus, Post Malone, Tanner Adele, and Ooh. Will Jones appear on songs. And there are two covers, Dolly Parton's Jolene and the Beatles' Blackbird. Wow. I wonder how much she had to pay to get those covers. Well, yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's Michael Jackson's or if it's Paul McCartney's. Oh, good call. Probably, it's probably Paul McCartney. Right? Yeah, Bought probably. Out. Yeah, you think so? I wonder if McCartney makes makes a little uh, cameo. And I wonder if they're like, if Beyonce's doing it, there's a little discount. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, I mean, a little discount. Our artists love other artists, and I'm really, uh, I wonder if we're going to look back on this in 10 years and see this as kind of like an evolution in country music, because when that song comes on, even though it's been out for a couple weeks and we've kind of played it in the studio a couple times, everybody in the studio, mm -hmm. especially the women, their shoulders just start moving. And I think it's going to introduce people to this genre. And when they go to look at this, there's going to be other suggested songs. And they're going to click on those. And they're going to be like, I like that one, too. And I think it's going to blossom. And I think there's going to be a gigantic new fan base introduced. I... Okay, I'm gonna. I don't want to get too in the in the weeds, but get in the I weeds. became like I started in radio in '95, and then I had a full time job in '99, and I have been a radio geek since I was like able to figure out what radio was. One of the things when transitions happen into streaming and when social media started introducing radio or introducing music was the way that program directors would speak to us to kind of rally the troops was. Yeah, they can get their music from anywhere, but who's going to tell them what to listen to? I actually remember somebody saying that in a big meeting. And then it became quite evident that you don't need a singular person in some tower somewhere telling you what you like. People having the option of all of these different varieties of music Genres may not be genres in the way that we think about things anymore. But Beyonce saying this isn't a country radio out or this is a country music album. It's a Beyonce album is 100% spot on with how we speak about music and entertainment. Like if you go on to any of our playlists, would it be like, well, this is the genre? No, it's what Tori likes. It's what mm. Al likes. It's what Jeff likes. So I think that we're going to start talking about these things very differently as my uh, Hair is, my, hair is caught in my ring. Uh, but I think that the language will change. Flexibility, mm -hmm. fluidity. Very good without One a more card. F Two word. words, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Four words on that side without a card. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. good. All right, switchy gears. Travis Kelsey may be a three-time Super Bowl champ and happens to be dating one of the biggest pop stars in the world, but lately he's been getting some attention for his dad bod. Travis and Taylor were spotted on vacation in the Bahamas last week, and some people noticed that he put on a few pounds. It's the off-season, people, but Travis had fun with it with his brother Jason on their podcast. Let's watch. I'm, I'm we're, 283. We're, we're, 283 we're in the same weight class now. 
Two, yeah, I know, but I'm. Two eighty three. Right, like I do when it comes still, to drinking. Whoa. It's March. We're heart. in the same weight class right now. <laughs> All right, can we before we start? Remember, people trolled Patrick Mahomes yeah, early on. Yeah. We have a side by side of their dad bods. We have a side bod. There's a joke side in there. Bod. Side, <laughs> side by side. Yeah. So here, listen. I want to hear what you have to say. But can you have a dad bod without being a dad? That's what I want to open up with. I think you can. Here is my argument as to why. It doesn't make sense to have a dad bod without being a dad. But I think colloquially, we as a culture, when we say dad bod, we're not thinking about your kids. It's just the way that your physique looks. So I think it's in, just shaming your frame. Yeah, it's just like, oh, you have a dad bod. So I think that's why you can still use the term even if you don't have kids, even though that doesn't really make sense, it does, Tori. Okay, let me ask you something. When you're a dad, what happens when, what makes you get a dad bod? Like a mom and a mommy makeover, obviously her body shifts, right? But physiologically, what happens to the dad? Metabolism and age. Okay. And also just and stress priorities. And stress. Yeah, you, I mean, you're doing work too. Right, 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 right. I right. know everyone likes to discount the father. No, I'm asking you for to yeah, get that platform. The first... <laughs> Yeah, Thanks. go ahead. Yeah, yeah um, this is a very serious show. <laughs> so me as a father, what I like to do first. No, you're you're up late. You're not getting sleep. You're eating terribly yeah. because you're just trying to get something to eat while you're dealing with the baby. There's a lot going on yeah. that goes into that, right? You don't really have time to get in there. I'm sure these guys have time, but is it okay to call tell someone they have a mom bot? Ooh. I think Ooh. the thing about the dad Ooh. bod is Ooh, we're just though, skipping over that. No, no, no. no I know. I'm just kidding. The thing about the dad bod is the fact that it's we call it a dad bod, but there's like a softness to it. Like there is. It's not like anyone was like, oh, look at his dad bod. Psh, wouldn't let him. I don't close know if I'd describe the five foot pole. You know, like it's something different. It's like he's doughy. He's a little doughy. He's not. He's not as tall. Hot yeah, as he was Doughy? before. Softer. I'm just. I just love the time that we're in. Could I say that about a woman? No. I hear that double standard, and I thought about it as we zoomed in on him and, and side by side. We could never do but this on the flip side. Also, the double standard too is it would be much different if Taylor showed up uh, a little bit with more meat on her. Doughier. Yes. I've, I've, it would yes. be much different. I'm, I'm going on vacation with my husband, <sighs> and I'm like. Okay, I need to I need to do cardio. I need to make sure that like these these swimsuits fit, blah blah blah, whatever. And he's like, cool. <laughs> and he just goes back to like doing what he's doing. And I'm like, well, what about you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I I'm okay. And I'm like, you're okay, or you're okay with it? Like, what's going on? <laughs> here? I'm not okay with. As I'm like, if we go on and like we're on a beach somewhere, I'm all self conscious about like, oh, am I did did I do this? I could have done more of this. I could have whatever. And he's just like, it's cool because he's like, we're going to a place where all the guys look like me, and then the girls look like. And I'm like, see, that's exactly the double mm -hmm. standard. Mm -hmm. they, he's expecting to fit in with the guys. I'm just like, where is this place? <laughs> so I can go fit. No, in. I um, love people like your husband because they just go, they don't care. You yeah. know what I mean? They're not so absorbed. They're more about having fun and not about superficial things. I need to be more like that as well, for sure. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, our interview with country star Clint Black. He's telling us all about celebrating the 35th anniversary of Killing Time. And Steve Martin opens up about his iconic career in a new documentary. We're going to talk about it next. You guys, uh, heads up that um, like, dude, that horse that Beyonce's so on, where she's like, holding the reins metaphorically and figuratively you know I mean? and literally. She, it's called a lip answer, lip is lip is there, lip answer. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, anyway, the horse goes from black and brown, and as they age, it turns white. And I think a lot of what she's saying is, I know Al is asleep, but that country music went from being black and brown and switched over and whitewashed itself. That's what I think. That's interesting. Wake up, sir. Oh, okay. Did you get that? Uh, yeah. Okay. It, it goes from black to white, and I think she's saying in life okay. that country music went from black to white. Doesn't eventually all hair go from black to white as you no, age? It's no, a, the, the horse hair skin dies? goes from black. The horse is black when it's born, and the lip ends are turns white. I and I think people are saying that's a message. I have no idea. <laughs> the she's horse that she's on a is, a, is a lip answer. Did you give her a weird card, Michael Dean? No, I did not. And the it. lip answer <laughs> is a horse that Look goes. I want no part of this. I can't stand uh, being here now. <laughs> I can't. I used to 
love this job. I, I, <laughs> now I just get discredited all day long. I think the, the thing that we missed during the Patrick Mahomes dad bod thing, <sighs> just going back to that, is maybe doesn't this prove that uh, like minute. pretty muscle is less functional than because those guys have Super Bowl yeah. rings. Like po some popcorn muscles are happening out there. I think there's a lot of like, you don't, I, I, it just doesn't seem like, it seems like functional muscle doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing as striated muscle. Oh. But when I played pick up basketball, the guys that like would come in a onesie and strip down, come straight from a construction job, no muscle tone, so no, strong. So strong, right? The so the guys, guys that were like arm curl, lat pull down, great. They, they can't play. They didn't want. No. They didn't want it. But like five foot seven guys been working a jackhammer all day. back some memories. Welcome back to DBL. From his wild and crazy days on SNL to being a box office star on the big screen, Steve Martin is now the subject of a new documentary on Apple TV Plus. It looks back on his start as a stand-up comic to his life today. Take a look. I always thought of him as the door out of the 60s. You could be silly again. All comedy was political, and I felt that it was time to change that. Steve Martin has just taken the big leap onto the big screen. I was launched into the stratosphere. I was scared out of my mind. So in the doc, Steve talks about not having, not really having any talent and being consumed with anxiety in his 30s, but told CBS Sunday Morning he's mellowed out at 78. Let's watch. I have this theory that as you age, you either become your worst self or your best self. And I feel like I've become my better self and I can see other people becoming their worst self. They become more hostile, they become more difficult. And I, it's a pretty clear line for me. Love it, brings back some memories. Absolutely, just like to see where he is. I read his, uh, his book, Born Standing Up, read it a couple times just because I really, was unfamiliar as a comic with how famous he was and like the the venues he would sell out i think people know him from movies but he was as big a famous comic as any of that's sure. ever lived yeah definitely. yeah lauren sure. michaels even wanted him to be a permanent host for snl when they were first starting with linda ronsett so he's was just implemented as the icon of comedy my favorite um steve martin movie is by far the three amigos <laughs> yes it's by far my favorite um there we go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the physicality of Chevy Chase, Martin Short, and Steve Martin is too good in this movie, um, and I can watch it over and over again. And it reminds me of my family growing up, so there's that as well. He also, by the way, if you meet Steve Martin on the street, hands you this card. I think we have a picture of it. Um, and the card simply says, you've met Steve Martin. You think he's a great guy. I think we had a, a picture of it. Maybe not. Just we'll take your word for okay. it. Okay. And we're done. <laughs> That was my. Thing. There's a picture there of a is. business card. Okay, oh, there, there it is. is. There it is. Okay. I, yes, I love. I mean, uh, do you have any pictures of cards? I do. I do not. I'm like, can't you just print that out for me really quickly? No <laughs> doubt. Parenthood. Uh, just not only was he so funny, and he was the straight man. Your favorite in that. movie, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really one of my favorite movies. It's really transcended into my adult years in terms of kind of identifying personalities and families and finding humor and love in there, not just ostracizing people that are weird or sometimes even problematic in your family. Like, that's cousin Erica, you know, she comes in a little, she'll have a couple <laughs> drinks, it's okay. And rather than just being like, don't invite her. I thought it's, I think it's kind of a cool thing to be like, your family is, you can't choose everybody. There's 30 of us together this yeah. weekend, so that's yeah, kind of what's happening. I chose bringing down the house. Bringing uh, down the house. Queen Latifah, Look at yes. That's Loved hilarious. that movie, watched it with my family. What was yours, Jeff? They work together so well. Mine was, it's got, there's so many, the jerk is up there, but My Blue Heaven is absolutely my favorite Steve Martin Easy. movie. Beep, 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 beep. You gotta <laughs> check it out, dude. It's really funny. If you haven't watched it, so many great one-liners in there. It's about a gangster in, um, suburbs. Yeah. Yeah. Protection, located right? in the suburbs. Yeah, right. yeah, it's hilarious. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It's been 35 years since Killin' Time topped the charts and launched Clint Black into country music stardom. Earlier, we talked with him about bringing the album back to celebrate its anniversary and the secret behind his cowboy hat. Take a look. So Clint, cool. welcome back yes. to the yes. Oh man, good to see you too. Hi Clint, you have so many hits on your Killin' Time album and now you're on tour performing them all over again. How does this tour feel different decades later than the first one? Well, we are doing songs from that album that we haven't done in 35 years. You know, we've always done the hits, uh, give or take one or two, uh, but now we're doing from track one all the way through 10, uh, the whole album in order. Wow. And I feel a different reaction from the audience before they get there tweeting at me and stuff and, uh, and at the show. And it felt funny at first, like, you know, I'm not sure they want to hear every song from that album. They do. The reaction was fantastic, and I don't always sense it because I'm busy changing guitars or getting a different harmonica into my brace and, and listening for the count off. <laughs> but I was able to, I was able to feel it. Mm, that's amazing. Cl speaking of that, Clint, do you feel pressure to just play your hits when you're at a concert? Because as an audience, we're like, just play the hits, man. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the good thing is I, I have too many to do them all in one show. <laughs> and so someone's always going to be disappointed. I've had people get mad, you know, that I didn't do Desperado, which wasn't <laughs> even a hit for me. It was quasi hit. That's a jam. Uh, that is a I jam. Yeah, I, I always do uh, at least one or two deep cuts. Nice. Uh, they seem to be fan favorites. They get a great reaction, so we do them. I'm just going to put it out on the table. If I came to see you and you didn't perform Desperate, <laughs> I would be very good. <laughs> it's such a great song. You can just about it. <laughs> like, I, had like... a guy, I, I had a guy down front that was just really, really mad about it. And, and, and we were already walking off the stage with this guy. It's over. That was my brother. I'm really, really <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, killing time completely changed the trajectory of your career. Do you remember when you realized life was going to be different? I do. I remember the exact moment I was driving by this, I have to say it, a crappy little bar. It was just a hole in the wall and a little strip center and uh, not some place I wanted to play every night. And I was driving past it after Better Man and Killing Time had gone number one. And I remember in a flash just realizing that it, in, in my hometown, Houston, Texas, it would never be the same for me. Wow. Walking in that bar or any other bar I played, my life had changed. And I remember feeling a, a little remorse. Oh, I, wow. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have changed anything because right. my dreams were coming true. But I remember lamenting that I, I have left something behind that I can never go back to. How wow. amazing to know in the really moment. Thoughtful. I know. Yeah. It is. In the moment. Okay, so you're part of a generation of country stars marked by their cowboy hats. Can you go incognito without your signature look? <laughs> I can, and it, it really depends on which part of the country I'm in, you know, or around my, uh, where I live in Nashville, I go everywhere and yeah, I think people are maybe tired of seeing celebrities, but uh, you know, if I'm in Norman, Oklahoma, I might uh, I might stand out a little more. <laughs> and uh, and a, a lot of times, I'm I'm told it's it's the smile that gave me away. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking past someone in a grocery store and smile, oh, I know that smile. Mm -hmm. even if they <laughs> That's a good thing. I'd recognize that cute face anywhere. Oh, yeah. What a great guy. Sweet. So sweet. <laughs> My God. So sweet. You, Clint, you are, you literally have filled this all up. Totally. So thank you. And thank you for stopping you by. DBL Nation, you can find Killing Time tour dates and locations at clintblack.com slash tour. You can also purchase Raising a Hand Coffee Table photo books by Clint's brother in Ooh. support of Rett Syndrome Research at raisingahand.com. That is amazing. Thanks again, Clint. <laughs> you guys are a blast. Yes. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thanks,
welcome back. We've got some great products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. All right, Steph, what do you have for us today? Hey, Tori. Hi, DVL Nation. We are so excited to show you the deals today. And as ever, they are fabulous. So let's go shopping. Yes. First up, this is fabulous, you guys. This is the Simple Wise Jewelry Amour with a mirror. This deal includes one Amour with an installation kit. Normally, this is $130. And we're selling it today for $64.99. That's saving 50%. And then check out this. This is very handy too. It's the Hackle Mini Travel Coffee Maker. What? This deal includes one coffee maker and one coffee tumbler with a lid. It's available in six colors. There's black, red, ruby red, blue, orange, and green. Normally this is $80. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice Sorry, that. But you've got it for $15. Oh. That's saving 81%, and this is so handy. Everybody wants coffee to go, and this is such an easy, environmentally friendly way of doing it. Absolutely, Tori, and it comes in different color options too, so guys, check yes. those out. Next up, we've got the Cortex Beauty Air Fold Ionic Foldable Dryer and two-piece blowout brush set. Ooh, this deal includes one dryer with two brushes, available in six colors. Normally, this is $250. Don't love that. No, we have it for $44.99 which is saving 82%. And then our last product today, Tori, is the Lysal Advance Infinite High Definition Wireless Headphones. Okay. This doorbuster deal includes one pair of headphones available in four colors. The doorbuster deals are always super popular, so guys, there's a limit three per customer. I like doorbusters. Normally these are $80, but we've got them for $15. Doorbuster! They're saving 81%. Head on over to MorningSaves.com, y'all, to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices, or you can even scan the QR code right on screen. It will take you directly to these products on Morning Saves website. Couldn't be easier. Thank you so much, Steph. Stuff. Those headphones remind me of my wife because I get her like earbuds and great headphones. No. She wants the me big too. headphones. You do? Yeah, because it doesn't fit in my ear, the other things. It Even hurts. like the, no. some of them have the thing that wrap around I the I want top. it fully on I, the way. I was I posh cans. for a long time and then I went cans. Cans. You can't go back. Yeah, once oh, you can, just, you can't go back. At the airport, you hear all the hustle and bustle totally. and now boarding wow. and you push that button and then no there's nothing. See, I'm, I'm Life a beat no. guy with it around no. my ear. Your wife has it because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I see you tomorrow. That was good. <laughs> that was good.